my name is Thomas Marshall. I am a PhD graduate student, geoscience here at University of Iowa. Um, I've been in Trowbridge since 2003 and uh, to be honest I haven't had a lot of strange experience in, in this building but I've heard stories of things that have gone on around here but um, I can relay a couple of strange things that have happened to me quite recently. This is the infamous room 231. It's where we did some uh, uh, parabolic microphone work. And we got some rather interesting EVPs. Um, one was, she died. Another was, um, when I mentioned that I don't come up here very often, uh, the EVP said, Christ, I hope you don't. I don't know what to make of that. And then there's the sigh. Um, Eric and I were talking, and there was a pause in our conversation, and there is this sigh, just out of nowhere, just a little sigh. No explanation for it. As I was talking about the EVP upstairs in 231, um, I was playing that to a fellow grad student, Diane Ramirez, and it was the sigh, which is one of the more uh, difficult to explain uh, phenomenon that we encounter, and I still can't explain it. But I was wanting to talk about what happened to this door while we were listening to it. I was right here. Um, there was nobody else in the room. So as we were listening to the sigh, I kept playing it over and over and over again uh, to listen to it, and on the third time, we had this door like this. It was kind of like this. It wasn't all the way closed. It wasn't all the way open. But something like this. And we were listening to the sigh, and the door did this. Really loud. One student is sitting down there, right here. And he was the only one. And so, as you can see the distance here, it's unlikely that he would have done that, run down here and run all the way back here and sat back down to complete his work. And I'm going to show you how hard it is for this door to close because there's a lot of air resistance when you try to close this door. See that? You can't. I'm having a hard time. So it's hard. It'd be hard just for the wind to blow this thing in like that. And it did this. See, I can't even do that. But it really is like someone hit it really hard and it slammed really loud. But you can't do it really easily from out there because of all the air resistance. This is the entrance to the sub basement, and in here is what we call the maze. They also, or what I was told, was they used to store cadavers here when this was a dentistry building because I assumed that they worked on cadavers for their dental procedures. So we're going to go inside I'm going to show you the maze and I'm going to show you a gurney that I was told they used to transport uh, the bodies. It's an old gurney. It looks like it turn of the century. It's obviously been well used. Uh, today we use it to transport large rocks, cores, things of that nature, but I could see it being used to transport uh, cadavers. This is the maze. It's a, the reason why it's called a maze is because it's very weird shaped. You know, if, if you look at offices, you wouldn't think that it would have this kind of configuration, but it's got some weird little nooks, weird little crannies, and a little kitchen area, too. And this looks very, very medical if you look at it. And it's got the white tiling, it's got the tabletop. Um, what I understand was that these offices is where they would store the actual bodies in here. So this was the actual cadaver storage area. At least that's what I was told. 
So what we're looking at here is actually part of the old dentistry building. Uh, some original light fixtures. I had assumed they're 1920s, maybe 1930s. These were high windows. So this is the ceiling of the repository in a 231, the room that we were in earlier. This wasn't here when this was the dentistry building. So this used to be a whole open area. And you can actually see way down onto the floor. And so over here would be some um, dental chairs. And so they would operate and conduct their surgical procedures here. And then people would watch from this balcony area here. So there's some what, wainscoting here, along here. And um, it looks like there's a balcony area kind of here. So maybe they watched from here, I don't know. Okay, we're about to enter um, one part of a tunnel system that used to run under a large part of the University of Iowa campus. So we're just going to go in here into this tunnel. And this tunnel here uh, runs from under Trowbridge goes out a little ways to the walkway in front of Troll Bridge and then it takes a 90 degree uh, turn and then you can actually follow the rest of it to chemistry building. Uh, right now you can't do that because um, it's blocked off with pipes and debris so but at one time you could actually follow this tunnel all the way to chemistry building. This is a very very spooky tunnel. It's got all sorts of tunnel sounds to it. The pipes make weird noises. Last time we were here, uh, one of the pipes or something made a really vigorous metallic jingling sound, like someone taking keys or something going jingle, jingle, jingle. And it was really, we didn't have the lights on. It was like this, and it was really spooky. And uh, that's when I left. <laughs> but um, this is uh, the outside. Um, there's a grate right here and above it is the outside and people walk over it. This is what maintenance workers used to uh, use to get under um, underground, especially in winter or you know, at night they would use this tunnel system to go from one building to the other. Earlier it was making all sorts of strange noises. Pipes were banging and things were rattling, but it's just kind of quiet right now.